Almost exactly six months ago, I made a video detailing what I thought we should expect from Python 3.12. At the end of that video, I said I would make an updated one around the release of the first beta, and well, today is release day. Today also marks what's called the feature freeze for 3.12, the point from which no new features can be added. So it's the perfect time to catch up and see where we're at. By the way, if you haven't seen that original video, I would recommend watching it before you watch this one, as even though quite a few things have changed since I made that, I'm not gonna be covering anything that hasn't. All right. Let's get on with it. Perhaps one of the bigger news stories is the rejection of PEP 690, meaning lazy imports will not be making their way into Python 3.12, or potentially any version below 4.0, after all. The main reason for this is the need to support and test for both methodologies, with mixes of dependencies that rely on lazy imports and others that rely on additional imports potentially being capable of causing huge problems. It has been noted though that a world where Python uses only lazy imports would be ideal, so maybe something to earmark for Python 4. On to some better news now, and one thing that's cropped up time and again in new releases is improvements to error messages. Python 3.12 is no different. The improvements this time around focus mainly on suggestions to help resolve commonly made errors, especially those involving imports. The interpreter will now suggest modules from the standard library when name errors are raised, flag when you've forgotten to provide the self dot when accessing methods and attributes, and even correct you when you make typos in module names. Definitely something for new and experienced Pythoners alike. Something proposed just a week after I made my original 3.12 video was PEP701, which aims to formalize the grammar of F strings, something which was never done when the feature was originally added. The new changes would mean you can use the same quote types throughout, use backslashes and expression components, and more freely nest F strings within each other. You can even add comments to multi line F strings if you want, though make sure to close the expression component on a different line to prevent it being treated as a comment. These updates aim to remove some of the more useless restrictions and make F strings more powerful and intuitive to everyone. The tar file module is also getting some love, with updates coming to the extract and extract all methods in particular. Specifically, a new filter keyword argument is being added to both, which allows for the rejection of files or metadata modifications during the extraction process. This is likely a response to the bug Trellix found a few months ago, which I made a video on by the way, that allowed just that. There will be three filters to choose from. Fully trusted, which is the current behavior, tar, which roughly follows the defaults of the GNU tar command, and data, which extracts as a data archive. While the default filter is staying the same for now, it will raise a deprecation warning when used, and the default will be set to data, the most secure of the three, from Python 3.14. This is all defined in detail in PEP 706. Of course, I haven't forgotten about the faster C Python project, which appears to be making good progress. The groundwork on immortal objects defined in PIP 683 appears to be more or less done, and PEP 684's per interpreter gil, along with many of its other prerequisites, is coming along well. In fact, between me researching for and writing this script, a commit went in that changed 96 files. The continued work on optimizing the remaining opcodes using the specialized adaptive interpreter has also made way for low impact monitoring, which should greatly speed up profiling and debugging, potentially to the point where it's next to no performance cost at all. PEP 669, nice, has all the information you need for this one. The trace optimizer and work on multiple interpreters have unfortunately not been so lucky. The latter has been rescheduled for 3.13, however, looking back through the Wayback Machine, we can see that this pet was originally intended for 3.10, so make of that what you will. The trace optimizer doesn't give an indication of when it will be ready, but my money is on this also being ready for 3.13. Together, these features alone should make for quite the release next year. All in all, 3.12 looks like it will be a pretty substantial release, which, if everything goes to plan, could fundamentally change the Python ecosystem as we know it. Thankfully, it looks to me at least like it will be changing for the better. As always, there will be links in the description for you to read up on the changes, including things I didn't mention here. I didn't want this video to be a half hour long. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like to let me know and subscribe for more Python videos, including the next one of these I'll make when the first final release reaches our editors in October. Feel free to leave a comment as well, letting me know what you're most excited about in Python 3.12. Thanks to my members and patrons on screen now for their ongoing support, and I'll see you in the next video for something really cool. Ciao!